The Andalusian Myth, written by Dario Fernandez Morera. He is a professor out of Northwestern University, and he wrote a book that people are very interested in. People want some facts when it comes to the Muslims, and this is the book you want to go to. A good work of nonfiction, uh, documents his sources and everything thoroughly. In fact, um, half of the book here on my Kindle is uh, sources, and there's quite a bit of information when you start going through the notes in the back. Take a look through those, too. Now, Spain, um, Al and Alas is the Arabized word for España, España, Spain. The Muslims first invaded in the very early 700s, and they were officially not in charge anymore in the mid-1200s. Uh, when they invaded, they took women as sexual slaves, and they start producing babies right away. Interesting side note, one million white slaves traded in Muslim lands during the 16th and 17th centuries. That's, uh, that's a story unto itself, I'm sure, who was behind all that trading of slaves, too, but for another time. Now, um, the sources bring out that the Muslims' diversity, the fact that they began producing uh, children with everybody and anybody wherever they go, is not a strength. It actually makes them much weaker than the Christian kingdoms they have been around. Interesting coin, a crusade, a pope must declare. The jihads are a permanent state for Muslims, and a caliph must do at least once a year, apparently back then anyway. They, Muslims conquer, and they get three choices, convert, submit, and pay the tax, or be killed. But the Spanish noted that usually it was all quite violent. Now, the, uh, Spain was made up of the Hispano-Romans at the time and the Visigoths. So there is a little bit of information about Visigoths. I've often wondered who they were and what they were about. The Arabs were impressed by Spain's architecture. But, of course, um, under Muslim rule, they tear it all down to get the valuable uh, materials out of it. Their own uh, architecture is inf inferior because of the quality of the materials. Art disappears, sculptures considered idolatry, and ironically enough, one of their very great mosques was built by uh, cre uh, Christian Greek architects, probably why it's still standing. Um, the Spanish call Muslims Moriscos, and um, Cervantes, who's best known for his uh, book Man of La Mancha, noted in one of his books the high birth rate among the Muslims. And I actually have to give a chuckle to that because I, I have always lived in the West and am now in the Southwest of the U.S. I've been around the Spanish influence my entire life, but actually it's a dominant influence now and has been that way probably for the last 25 years. I was um, born and raised in Silicon Valley, the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and lived there for the first 52 years of my life. I left 12 years ago because I did not belong in my neighborhood anymore. It had become completely uh, Spanish-speaking, very crowded, uh, more and more crime, lots of noise, and I moved on. And I will probably be moving on from here in New Mexico, too. Um, it's not true that um, the Southwest um, is the only Hispanic place in America. I would argue and say that most, uh, uh, quite a bit of the population from about the age of 35 on down is no longer um, European descent. And uh, you, when you look at somebody and you're wondering, wondering, then they're not European descent, who have those very crisp, clear features. So it's very, very different. Now the Spanish, came um, once uh, the Muslims were no longer in power, let, let's say 14, 1500s, the Spanish were coming through here in the southernmost, what would become the United States. They were in Mexico. Um, they were in South America. And the reason they came, what they came looking for was the gold. They had heard 
that the Indians had fabulous wealth in gold. And that's what they came trekking through the countries for, looking for the gold. And what has uh, been coming out recently on uh, the PBS, the government-run television series, they have a genealogy show. But uh, some of these uh, conquistadors who came looking for the gold were crypto-Jews. And you know, in Catholicism, which is, has been traditionally heavy duty throughout the Americas, Catholicism absorbs, absor absorbs the Indians' customs, um, the uh, Hispanics' customs, who, whatever religion and Jewish customs too are built in, especially here in New Mexico. Um, they absorbed everybody's way of life because New Mexico does have a strong uh, Spanish history, not, not Mexican necessarily, a strong Spanish history. When you are around a lot of Hispanics, um, there will be high crime rates. The cities are, almost all the big cities in America now are predominantly a lot of Hispanics in them. And after having uh, read through this book, it made me realize that uh, throughout these uh, Hispanic world, North America and South America, it has to have quite a bit of Muslim blood in it because of what went on in Spain. If you look at uh, a Spanish-English dictionary, which I have one, there it shows uh, the Spanish-speaking part of the world. It'll show Spain, and then it shows the Americas. And I think the heavy-duty population has been done in the last few hundred years. I, I, I'm not an expert on all this, but it's just some food for thought. I did take a, a very quick hop, skip, and a jump through the Middle East, up through Pakistan. I didn't spend very long in any one place. But what I did get a feel for uh, watching TV, very high crime rate, a lot of fraud. And that's what you see in Hispanic areas too. You get to know all the different body types, the facial features, and you can tell the different kind of peoples and what they are. Um, but the crime and the high birth rate, we have a uh, party here or an institution, I'm not quite sure what they are, but they're politically active. It's called La Raza, which is the race. And that's how uh, the Hispanics work. They just uh, have a high birth rate too. That's how they become dominant. Anyway, it's just some food for thought. If you're interested in Muslims, um, search, you know, search online the title and the author's name. Uh, he's given away quite a bit of his information for free. One more thing that the book takes on is law. He brings out that there are many laws on the books to avoid all these problems that countries begin running into, but they are not enforced. We've seen that here in America, especially in the last, what, 10, 15 years, probably in Europe. But apparently there were laws uh, for Spain too, but they just weren't enforced. So you have to give pause to this notion of law. It's not such a fixed institution. Maybe when it comes to crime and killing and criminals, law w works pretty good. But when you get into political law, government law, and all that, it's just something the elite use. Enjoy the book.